All right, Kyle, it's time for Final Jeopardy. The Avalanche had obviously six defensive players playing in the game against the Flyers. Who was the only defenseman to not score? I think I know the answer to this. Mm, eh, let's let's roll the intro first and make people wait. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, and joining me always is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, and today's episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. The holidays are around the corner, and finding the perfect gift is tricky. Omaha Steaks makes it easy to send friends and family an unforgettable gift guaranteed to be loved. Go to omahasteaks.com. Enter NHL into the search bar to order the perfect gift package. So I uh, threw it out to Kyle. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, <clears throat> the the question of the day. And if you had a million dollars in the bank, uh, and then this was Final Jeopardy for you, bet the million dollars because it's not that difficult to find out that the avalanche of their six defensemen, who was the sole defenseman to not score in this game would it be kurt mcdirt (laughs) it's not too difficult to figure that one out and that's just uh i think we should what's what's miko on a a eight game point streak and mcdermott is on a a season long point less streak so uh, i think we need to monitor that more than anybody else when will he ever get a point i thought he had an assist earlier in the year I thought he had one, but I just looked up his his uh, his stats and nothing. Mm. What is his purpose on this team? I I don't know. But uh, the Abs with a seven to five win over Philly. We will get to all of that. First things first. Follow the show on social media outlets. L O P N underscore Avalanche on Instagram. Uh, Locked on app. Excuse me on Twitter. Locked on Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, opinions to LockdownAvalanche at gmail.com. Follow the show's YouTube channel over on YouTube. And then you can see our own individual Twitter handles on uh, that if you're watching on the video version. So the Avalanche 7-5 to five winners in Philly who are maybe the most reeling team in the league. This is their ninth straight loss. And <clears throat> this is, I mean... Uh, we were talking a little bit before we recorded, and it's like, yeah, I'm happy the Avalanche won, but I'm not sold on how they played. I mean, you you did let in five goals. Granted, you had uh, your your prospect, uh, Eustace Anunen, playing his first start. He gets the win. Uh, did he look good? I think he made some good saves. Um, and then there are, you know, some some saves that – or some that he didn't save – which were they really his fault? Um, I don't know. I the Avs still are not playing solid defense in front of him, or in front of anybody really. Uh, so it's an it's an up and down thing for me right now. So overall thoughts uh, on the game before we kind of break things down. Honestly, this kind of feels like how we felt after the Montreal game. Like, yeah, we yeah. won, but like you don't feel good about it. Like this, yes, this is a team you should have beat. But like the way you beat them wasn't that great. Like seven to five <laughs> is, and not only was it seven to five, you were up four to one. Like exactly. you gave up, you gave up the first goal of the game. Okay, fine, that happens. But then your response was great. You reeled off four goals in in one period. Wasn't it four to? Was it four to one or four to two after the first? Let me see. It was a uh, four to. Th- Four to three? No, no, it was four to three. Four. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was seven. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. There were seven goals in the first. Um, yeah. and you had a shorthanded, a power play, and an even strength goal in the first. But still, you let them them back into it, and that's that's. I liked the response. Uh, but you know, Philly had a response for you, and and mm. you and this shouldn't have been a game. Like you're you're beating the teams that you should beat. I will give you credit for that. But I think, like you said, like I'm not I'm not comfortable with the win that it was a a solid win and they played good in all aspects of the game. 
they're still struggling defensively. Yeah, this was a very C plus performance. Like it's a passing grade. You can go on to the next one, but you did you turned in the bare minimum here. Um, yeah. The past couple games, the gl the glaring problems on defense and our sloppy passes and just positioning. I mean, it's carried over against Philly. And if you're doing that against Philly, it's not going to be great with the upcoming games you got. So this is something that we've known about that needs to be corrected. And how we go about that, I don't know. But it mm. does need to be tightened up because this road trip is about to end with a tough team. And the next stretch of the the, the schedule is going to be against tougher teams that are not Philly and Montreal. Well, that, that that I think that's you know why I'm thinking like, yeah, it was it was a win and you got two points. That's always good. But are you comfortable playing this way on on, on what your your next opponent is? No. If you were playing, you know, uh, the Maple Leafs again tomorrow, I don't think you'd be too comfortable about that. And you're going up against a team that's kind of comparable to them right now. And you just played Toronto not that long ago, and in the few games since then, it doesn't seem like. Uh, you know, a lot has been corrected. It seems like it's more status quo and we're just going to outscore teams. And, and, and for this game, you know, the, the previous game against Ottawa, you were, you were missing Kel McCarr, you're missing Nazem Kadri. You know, you, you were, you were down some guys. Uh, this one all, all without, you know, with the exception of Ryan Murray, but I'm not going to say he's a saving grace on your defensive end. Like you had your, 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 your defensive core, minus Curtis McDermott <laughs> in there. So there's no excuses. And it's, it's, I don't know what it is uh, with the as defense, but they are the number one uh, scoring team in the league. And I don't even know where they stand defensively. It's probably not good. And this was not against Carter Hart either. Like you also, mm -hmm. this was Philly's coming off a of back to back. Like you're going up against Mark Jones. So yeah, like you hung seven on him, but, it's not hard to do. Um, the Avalanche <laughs> love feasting on him. Like when he played for the Sharks, he was a great goalie to go up against. But you don't feel good about like a seven spot on Philly's backup goalie after they're all they do is lose. Um, huh. The defense honestly has to tighten up. I don't know if it has to do with just changing up the pairings because offensively they're producing. It's just positionally and when they pass. It's it's getting us in more trouble than not. It just seems like they're cheating a lot. Like they they, they want, and I wonder if this whole you know uh, Kale McCarr being you know an, an offensive weapon is kind of rubbing off on some of these other defensemen, like wanting to be that way. And it's like yeah. no, he he's an anomaly. Like he he's a, he's a freak of nature, and a lot a, lo a lot of the other defenders just need to stay at home a little bit more. And you catch them cheating and and. Uh, Johnson, Eric Johnson got caught cheating and he almost made a defensive play on it. And actually the puck was, uh, ricocheted off of, of, I think it was off of his stick that went through, uh, Anandin's five hole, but he, he was out of position, yep. out of position. And, and even the forwards, even on, on the defensive end, Tyson Jost got caught kind of circling a little bit too much on, uh, who it was. Um, let me see. I think it was Giroux's second goal. Yeah, it was a second goal at the end of the first. Um, just kind of skating a little bit in no man's land, losing track of his man. So th there's there's just a lot of work that needs to be done on the defensive end. And that's why I don't have a good feeling because that'll get you through on a team like Montreal and Philadelphia. It didn't get you through on Toronto. And let's see what happens against New York. And I think that defense cheating was evident in the first goal of the night. That was EJ. And I remember when that goal was scored, you're like, why is he playing so deep? Like Logan <laughs> O'Connor, it reminded me yeah. of Tyson Berry when he used to play down there. And I was like, why is EJ playing so deep? Like Logan O'Connor served him up great. But I was like. On the shorthanded one? Yeah. I was like, what uh, in the well, world? Yeah. I mean, should he have been there to begin with? Nah, probably yeah. not. But it's just the fact that, yeah, O'Connor made a play to, that led to a breakaway and Johnson just happened to be in good position to assist him on that breakaway. If that never happened, I don't know. Johnson might have been not in a good position and we might be talking something different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all I kept thinking was if he missed that shot and that was one that rimmed around the boards, like 
it would have been a nightmare scenario going back the other way because EJ's not the fastest in the world. He can no. he would not be able to gain that ground. And right. the defense is doing that a lot. And like the forwards just kind of drift off in the neutral zone and just kind of <laughs> hang there for a minute. So yeah. We got to we got to tighten up there, and I think once we get that tightened up, I think we could feel a little bit better after these games where you're just like you got that weird feeling. I think if we could just tighten up, just do the core basics, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, because if if Philly was was fighting and like just scratching for these goals because the the ads are making it difficult for them, then all right, then Philly's just working their butts off, but there's just so many pockets where guys just find in the avalanche D right now. I mean, it's, it's like a Swiss cheese defense and uh, it, it, it's, it, they're, they're, they're not a tough uh, team to score against uh, on right now. So um, yeah, go ahead. I'm glad that they play the locked on avalanche podcast in the locker room before every game, because they listen to what mm. we were saying about the Ottawa game about puck chasing. They stop yeah. that completely. They just yeah. everybody chases around. Yeah. So they don't there's no puck chasing. It's just positional chasing. Yeah, they don't play music in the locker room. They play the uh locked on avalanche podcast no. all the time, of course. Uh well, I'm glad they listen. Yeah. So <laughs> and I know maybe we're we're kind of making it seem like it wasn't like all good. Sure. Like the Avalanche won. There were good things that came out of this game. It scored seven goals. That that's always a positive. The power play looked good. So let's get a little bit into that, those things. But uh, mm-hmm. first, we are going to hear from Omaha Steaks. Have you ever ordered from Omaha Steaks, sir? I have. Last Christmas, I believe it was. Oh, look at that. Well, this Christmas, the holidays, they're here. They're not around the corner. They are here. And find the perfect finding the perfect gift can be tricky for some people. And Omaha Steaks makes it easy to send friends and family an unforgettable gift guaranteed to be loved. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter NHL into the search bar to order the perfect gift package. For $99.99, you'll get 24 entrees like the world-famous bacon-wrapped filet mignons, chicken breasts, sides, desserts, and so much more. When you use the code NHL, you'll also get an additional eight Omaha Steaks burgers for free with your order. We've heard all the reports about shortages and shipping delays, so you don't want to wait. Order the perfect gift package today at omahasteaks.com. And once again, you will get eight free burgers when entering the code NHL. Achieve gifting greatness with Omaha Steaks. Incredible flavor, incredible value, and 100% guaranteed. Omahasteaks.com. Keyword is NHL. Also brought to you by Boost Mobile, and you listen to podcasts for the power of the inside track, and you can switch to Boost Mobile for the power of saving money. Get three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month per line and a free 5G phone when you switch, so you can get the latest sports news and all on one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save, that's Boost Mobile. The free phone is limited to new customers and one per line. Additional restrictions do apply. Offers and coverage is not valid, available everywhere or for all phones and networks. See boostmobile.com for details. So we'll get into some stats here. Um, Abs, 50 shots on goal. That usually leads to good things. And for this one, it leads to, uh, to seven goals. 32 on net for the Flyers. Uh, the faceoffs where the apps have been really bad, I feel for, uh, large portions of games, a little bit more towards that 50, 50, but the flyers out face off them 54% to 46%. Uh, but the power play for the abs was, uh, it was very good. Three for five on the night. Um, good. I mean, amazing what can happen. Look what they did. The, the zone entries for the power play were so much better. And why? Yes. Because they had those two guys going in, not just Nathan McKinnon. Mm-hmm. Again, they listen. <laughs> they, yeah. I know we're tooting our own here, horn here. But, <laughs> but that worked almost every single time because Philly didn't know what was going to happen. You still gave it to Nathan McKinnon, but there was more than him being the only option to go into the zone. 
And because of that, Philly has to respect both players going into the zone. And the abs were just walking in, setting up. It was it, – it, that is what we've been needing for the first two months of the season. And not only did the power play look good tonight – I mean, three for five is great. Um, yeah. This is – Philly, one of their bright spots, they are, I think, 10 or 11 when it comes to the penalty kill. Like, that is their one shining spot on the team mm-hmm. is they pride themselves on the penalty kill. And for the Avs to look that good against – what's considered a top 10 penalty kill in the league. That That is a huge um, thing to build off of going forward. And I agree with you. The transitions looked incredible tonight. And their ability to get set up and pass around looked very, very good tonight. So that's something that we definitely want to take into New York on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this was all set up for the Avs to, to – and we talked about it yesterday, how this could be the start of a week where, you know – the guys like really start to pick up their game because you're going up against a team uh that that's lost as many games in a row as they have and then you know yesterday morning their head coach is fired yeah. so you have that on top of everything so i mean the flyers are just in disarray um and then you had a dog take a dump on the ice like right before the game started so you're like nothing is going right <laughs> for the flyers if that's not an omen i don't know what is yeah and that it was super quiet that entire first period. Like I yeah. honestly, I was watching the game and I would close out, open it back up because I thought the audio was messed up. That arena like feels just there's no energy on that. Like in the arena, when it comes to, like the music and everything, it feels like they're just pressing buttons. Like, come on, we got to get hyped somehow. And I felt so not, bad for Flyer fans. That is not Philadelphia. No atmosphere. Uh, Philly fans are are a little bit crazy. You know, <laughs> they're 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 Philly crazies. And yeah, you're right. Uh, they they. I mean, you know, when when your team's not doing well, they're just going to turn on you. Yeah. They're they're that they're that type of fan base. So, uh, for for the Abs, um, I, let me. I I think it was 14 players, including Anunen, scored a point. Let me yeah. see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thir- oh, wait, did I miss one? Hang on, let me do this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I have fifteen. Fifteen. The only guys that did not score, we've established Curtis McDermott. Um Darren Helm did not score. Uh Abu Kubel did not score. And Burkowski did not score. So those were the only ones that didn't. So I mean, this was a a round table of uh of points being being scored by the Avs. And, and that's that's a plus. All of that is plus. It's not just coming from the top line. That's your depth coming into play. That's your defense. Five out of six defenders scored. And it wasn't just yeah. let's see, uh Johnson, uh Jack Johnson with an assist, EJ with one and one, Taves, two assists, uh McCarr with the goal, which we'll talk about in uh, in a minute. And Sammy G with uh, an assist. So, um, you know, goals and assists being scored by by the defense. By, and, and that kept their streak going of 11 games in a row where the defense defender has scored. So you're getting offensive production from the defense. Now you need defensive production from the defense as well as the forwards, obviously. And New Hook is building off this momentum. Like he is quietly becoming a force to be reckoned with. And yes. Val Nachushkin as well. He is, I think he's taking more of that Burakovsky role that we had a ye- last year or the year before. Like Nachushkin, he's got this ability where he he gets in his mind, I'm scoring now, and he will do whatever it takes to put yeah. that puck in the net. He <laughs> is next level. Nuke has stepped up his game. New Hook is really getting consistent, and he's doing. he's getting a little bit more confident, and you see that in the moves and the plays that he's setting up. Yeah. So the people you don't expect to produce on the offensive side, they're producing as well. So coupled with the defense scoring as well, a lot of factors of the avalanche offense is really starting to percolate and it's looking really good right now. I, that's what I wrote down for new hook. He, he's slowly making a, a spot for himself on this roster yes. and to, to be where he is right now uh, from where he started this season. Mm-hmm. 
where he was, he, you know, Bednar wanted more from him. And it wasn't just, you know, a, a roster spot was just going to be there for him. He had to earn it. He didn't. He didn't. And he was sent down. That's not to say, like, you know, his career with the abs is over. He's a young dude. So they wanted him to go down, work on some stuff, maybe have a little bit of humility. And now he's come up and, and that sending him down uh, is is exactly what they were. What's happening is exactly what they were wanting to happen. Exactly. Send him down, not as like a demotion or like you can't hang up here. It's just take a step back, take a step yeah. back, go work on things. And when you come back, we're expecting you to be a big part of this team. Um, and it did take him a little while to, to, to get going, but he is getting comfortable. He is settling in. And when a young guy like him starts rattling off points, then you're just confidence levels through the roof. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think he's on pace for like 20 goals for this season, as we'll take that any day. Yeah, that was definitely like you have the weapons to score new hook. Just go down and refine them. And there must be something in the water down there in Loveland because Frankie, as soon as he started his injury um, stint with the Eagles, he got a shutout. So yeah. you get down there, you get in that the AHL environment, you can refine the things you're good at. You don't have to over overperform and like establish yourself on the NHL landscape. Go down, refine what you're good at, and bring that with you when you come up. And I think, like especially if you saw Newhook last year, those couple games that we get to see him, and what you get now, I think this is going to be a really solid player, especially the deeper in the season we go. Yeah. And and if he's playing this well and, you know, you have him on a bottom six role, that's that's just aces. You know yep. I mean, that, that just makes it uh, them, you know, much more tough to uh, scheme against. So, mm-hmm. um, all right. We will hear from uh, Ben online and then we will get into our our. We're going to start picking our players of the game uh, after each game. So we're, we're going to do that right after Bet Online, which has you covered all season with more prop bets, odds, and lines than ever before as the football season continues on and marches towards the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to our new updated desktop and mobile device websites and sign up today to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code LOCKED ON. To receive your bonus from basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. And it's where the game starts, betonline.ag. So, yeah, like I said, we're going to start doing uh, players of the game. For each one of us, we'll try to uh, come up with two different players so we're not just rattling off the same uh, guy with the same stats. And uh, unless, like I told you, unless, you know, someone goes off for eight points, <laughs> pretty sure he's going to be both of our player of the game. <laughs> uh, but for now, uh, a seven to five victory, which was game number 2000 in the uh, Avalanche franchise. Who you got for your uh, locked on and locked in player of the game? It easily has to go to Eustace Ananen and Eustace Brawl. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is it just because he got his first win? So, you, you know, we're not, we're not going to nitpick on, on like, eh, you know, he let in five goals, but this is purely kid got his first win. I'm giving him my, my player of the game. He got, and he did first, play well. He, he got his first win. He got his first point. <laughs> and, he played against Ottawa and he played this game against Philly. And I think he's like, if you watch the the two games, he's picking up so well, like his demeanor is out of this world when it comes to a young goalie, yeah. like the way he was playing that puck, like in Ovechkin's office in the dots, like coming out, like he had that confidence. Like I can abandon my post. I could come out here, field this puck and like help my team out a little bit. The confidence that he has in those moments and like his glaring problem right now is controlling the five hole. And he knows yeah. that he, he let in a couple. And if that's his one big takeaway, he's going to work on that. And he's going to be somebody we can rely on for years to come. So Eustace, 
have yourself a game there, bud. You looked mm-hmm. great tonight. Congratulations on your first NHL win. Yeah, I think you know there, there were some goals that with, with Johansson were like, dude, it, it's you know it's a seeing eye shot. It's right in front of you, and, and you let it through. You know, for him, there, there you're right. Like the the five hole was a problem, but the on the one break on the shorthanded goal that uh, Philly had. That was that was a pretty move by that yeah. guy. You know, I don't remember who scored it, but um, that that was a pretty move. And then there was another one where uh, the the flyer player was behind the net, and it mm-hmm. seemed like he was going around, like to go full circle around the net, and he stopped and went the other way. And Eustace kind of like kept going, and the play came on the other. Like that's going to happen. I'm not even going to say that's a rookie mistake. Some, some that's just a, that's a good play. Mm-hmm. Some of these you have to give credit to the guys who scored the goals and then the the second Claude Giroux goal uh he shifted from the left side to the right side maybe not enough maybe should have hugged that post a little bit more but again that was a solid shot by by Giroux so uh yeah he let in some ones that 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 were not the greatest but he did make some stops along the way obviously and see the thing with these like these are learning goals like it's you could point out like what you should have done like the jojo goals that we were harping on the other night like where you it goes in you're like what did i do like he doesn't even know if he has it or not he's yeah. doubting himself like eustace could see those goals he's like oh next time i'll just be on the post a little bit more right exactly he's got he's got the answer to those goals he's not like i don't know what i'm doing like he's not beating himself up he knows what he has to do so next yeah. game he could just apply that to his game and build from that so I feel like that's those little things that you learn over time in the game. Like we're not going to give him awards right out of the gate, but he's looking good for coming as young as he is. Like, Mm. I mean, he's a young kid and he's got some veteran like swagger. So yeah, that's a good thing. And and also not expecting to be in this position right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, injuries are a thing and we talked about injuries yesterday and we pretty much talk about injuries every day. Um, (laughs) Sure, there's always an opportunity and, and a possibility you get called up, but um, I think that you know things happen quick, and and you know he he got called up, got thrown in, um, did what he could, and then was given the start, and, it, and like the you, the progression, you, you and like you're saying, like you can see the the guy's got talent, and he's you know good size for a goalie, mm-hmm. and he's still young, so he's still gonna fill out in that aspect. I think it was a good start for him. Uh, yeah. and, and we'll we'll kind of say that. Um, for me, I, I was going defense, and I was thinking, you know, between you know Taves, who again is just uh, he. You know, we're talking about New Hook slowly making a, a name for himself for the Avs. Yeah. Uh, Taves is making a name for himself across the league. Yeah. So he 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 is. We are you know every day that, that goes on that he's on this team. You know that that's another move that we just can. Say Joe Sackick is uh, incredible. <laughs> but I think I'm going to go with McCarr. I think I have to go with Kale McCarr on this one. He had that goal, and and that goal was a thing of freaking beauty. Um, and he he faked that drop back pass. Yeah. And I think this is where, you know, we talk about it all the time that it's telegraphed. You know it's coming. The defense knows it's coming. And teams are starting to play for that. So they're starting to cheat a little bit. And Kale McCarr was like, he went for, he was going to go back and he noticed the defender back further than normal. And he was just like, okay, executive decision. I'm going to keep going and just went right around the defense. And I don't remember who was hanging on him, but he was right there with him. And he roofed a shot from basically in the goalie paint, which is insanely difficult to do on its own. But when you have a defender, all over you to do it and closing in on the goalie. <clears throat> that's um, that's a special, special move and a special player. And, you know, we talk about Kale McCarr all the time and understandably so. And I purposely put his jersey right there today there you to, go. <laughs> uh, to show off, you know, how, how incredible he is. So uh, unbelievable move. I think this year for Kale McCarr, like it's always been like kind of like the running joke in avalanche circles. Like he always looks like he's 15 years old and he's always like so nice and timid and like 
But this year, it's like we've watched our little boy become a man. <laughs> and, like, yeah. he is taking, like, he's got this, like, authority and this confidence and this dominance when he's like, okay, it's on me or I need yeah. this goal now. He can flip that switch almost like Nathan McKinnon. He's got that capability where he could flip a switch and he can just get it. And in that play that went coast to coast, he's like, okay, I know I got this. Right. Right. And that, and that, that's what you want to see. Like he, he was going to do one thing, which the abs do over and over and over again. And he had to think quick. And that's what I love is the decision making is, all right, I'm changing my mind here and I'm going for it. There's no hesitation. There's no like, well, maybe let's get up a little bit more and then drop it back. He is so confident in his abilities and the avalanche are okay with him doing that. Mm -hmm. I think that is that that can't be understated. Because there's so many like defenders, especially on a power play. It's like we got to run this play. We have to do it this way. And if if really across the board, but especially guys like McCarr, if they if they if they see an opening and they want to take it, they take it because number one, they know that they can. And number two, the coaching staff's OK with it. So uh, it, that that was a, a thing of beauty. And um, yeah, I, I I absolutely love that guy, and I think we're seeing him become a man not only on uh, the ice, but when you go from eight hundred thousand dollars a year to nine million dollars a year, uh, you pretty much become a man overnight. Yeah, so, yeah, the bank account will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that works. Uh huh. Um, and another note, which I want to get to in the beginning, which I didn't. Uh, Bo Byron was sent home. He so he will not be an option for the Ranger game. Uh, and then we'll have to see against the Detroit game because that will be at home. But we know that he's not going to be available, at least for the, the Wednesday game. Um, and again, does this go to concerning because they didn't even they're like, we know you're not going to play for Wednesday. Uh, go home, rest up. Jared Bednar said it's not I can't I don't have it in front of me how he worded it. It's not a new concussion, but it is related to his head. I don't know what that means. Uh, either way, when you have concussions, you don't want anything going on with the head. You want the head to be okay, yeah. and it's not for him. So they sent him home. So we'll see where this goes. And the radio silence in the Darcy Kemper camp is odd as well. Like you well, expect to hear a little bit more, but um, he he took practice shots at morning skate, and I think there was an opportunity for him to play, but I think the Avalanche are thinking like. If he's not 100% and he's close to it, uh, give him a couple more days off because you have the Rangers looking at you. So give you know uh, Eustace a chance against the Flyers who are struggling. That's a perfect game for someone like him to start. And then if Kemper is, is close, let him take a couple days and be even more ready and prepared when you got to go up against a, a good team in the Rangers. If I was Bednar, I would send Kemper and Bo Byron back to Colorado and we'd pick him up when we go home. Because mm. if you remember Kemp, like not only the injuries, but Kemper had the skate issue as well. And mm -hmm. like, you know, he's like all over the place. He's got to get himself back together. Let's Stay take home. Jojo and Eustace through this road trip, and we'll pick everybody back up when we go back home. Let Kemper rest, get back together. Let Bo take care of himself, and we'll we'll ride the rest of this. with. I mean, Jojo, he's a viable option. But Eustace, yeah. he he needs the NHL experience as well. So, well, if he's playing Wednesday, he's he's about to get it. Yeah, uh, someone that young going into that arena uh, can be daunting. So I don't know. We'll have to maybe we'll get some news tomorrow. But maybe I would guess not till Wednesday morning that we'll hear about Kemper. So, Thirty minutes before the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He'll be back, and then somebody else will get hurt that will you know not be <laughs> playing in that game. Most likely, who knows. All right, everyone, that will wrap it up for today. Thank you for tuning in. And Av's got two points. Oh, I wanted to check the standings real quick because that should have we are second place. Them up. Yeah, I mean, and the other teams in the uh, division, are they even playing tonight? Nope. The, well, the Coyotes and Stars are playing each other right now, and they're tied at one. Um, blah, 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 blah. That's it. That's it. So, yeah. I think we're see. still like 10 points behind Minnesota. Uh, seven, seven, okay. Seven points with two games in hand. So yeah, you've catapulted up to number two, at least for, for the time being. 
All right, everyone. Uh, as always, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Head on over to Locked On NHL. Make that your second listen of the day. Get caught up on all of the news and action going on around the league. And he is Kyle Sullivan, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. I am Christmas Ellie. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.